What's going on, guys? This is Manuel Bedoy from Black Sands. Uh, and today, I decided to actually put our Facebook page on here. So prior to this, it was only on YouTube, but now we're also streaming on Facebook. So to all my um, Facebook people out there, first time seeing us live stream our courses, uh, welcome. Uh, this is the first time you're going to be getting this, but we're going to be doing this for most of this season, this coronavirus season, because we believe in you guys and we want to really um, help you guys grow as offers. Now, uh, I'm a little early, so I'm not going to start immediately. Instead, for all those people who worked on the last course, all right, I need you guys to be dropping some of your perfected log lines in the comment section okay put your put your stuff in the comment section and uh i'll go and look at those and i'll see about those log lines see if they are much better than what they were last week when we were sharing them all right so let's see those right now what's up generational In the meantime, we're going to be talking about this today. That is defining the story, arcs and absolutes. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me well. Sound check. If you can see, um, hear me, just comment in the um, comment section, and then I'll be able to move forward. What's up, Ashley? Haven't seen you in a minute. So I'm going to give one last chance to um, share the log lines from last week, and then uh, we're going to be good. Uh, I see Isaac uh, has one, so let's go and look at his stuff. Boom. Uh, Watchman. So ex-Coast Guard and drug lord Easy has an encounter that changes his role in the community and makes him the city's new hero. All right. Uh, all right. So... What this does is it sets up a pretty cool uh, main character, right? So um, first of all, he's ex-Coast Guard, so he has an honorable past, but now he's a drug lord, right? Uh, so so he got set by with a sketchy present, right? Sketchy present, honorable past, something happens in the community, and now he has to step up. Me personally, I wouldn't say he's going to be the city's new hero. I would make it more like, He's the only person that could save the city because that leaves his questionable choices up to whatever happens in the future. Maybe he's an anti-hero. Maybe he saves the, the day by being the bad guy, right? But he saves the day, you know, his own um, ruthless way. Or maybe he does it by saving people and doing all that stuff. I don't really know. But uh, if you keep that vague, it'll be a much stronger log line than if you call him a hero. He's a hero. He's already locked into a certain way of being, and we don't want to. We don't want to lock people's destinies for the story. All right, how about this one? Robert Kemp says, "Lizard Hunter X, a space, a space criminal named X, gets caught in an intergalactic war between two factions." Uh, we gotta, we gotta give a story to um, the main character. So the main character has to have some kind of irony. Uh, if you remember last week, what we were talking about was irony is important in the logline because it differentiates what your story is going to be compared to somebody else with the exact same thing. Imagine how many stories you saw where there was some space guy and he's stuck in a war between two or more factions in the universe. It happens all the time. So how are we going to dis um, change that is by being a little bit more specific on his particular situation and how the events that are happening in the future are completely opposite of his nature. All right, let's see here. Uh, the billionaire crime fighter one. Let's see if we get if this one improved. 
So Carlos is from last week, right? A billionaire crime fighter must put a stop to a new drug on the streets, but soon realizes that the distributor may be among his loved ones. All right. There we go. So uh, that's a good one, right? Do you really, are you really going to stop somebody who, and put them in jail for life if they're, if they're your family? You know, interesting dynamic there. Who knows? I like that one. I like that new version of the wolf. Uh, let me do this one, and then we're going to be done, all right? So here's the last one. Jamel Wilson says, uh, an insecure young man finds himself forced into the role of leading his family through an apocalyptic world. Uh, sure. It's good enough, you know. It's good enough. No. Uh, me, me personally, I don't like using too broad of a statement when it talks about the, the A story. Uh, so a, apocalyptic world could be anything. Apocalyptic world could be zombies. It could be uh, nuclear fallout. It could be an asteroid hit the earth. It could be dinosaurs came to reclaim the earth and we're all screwed. So, so I would be, I would, I would um, genre this a bit more. Apocalyptic world should be explained. But as far as everything else, an insecure young man finds himself forced into the role of leading his family. Good statement. That's a good statement right there. Apocalyptic world. Let's narrow that down. All right. All right. So let's get this going. All right. Defining the story uh, through arcs and absolutes. Let's go. Boom. So the first thing we need to understand about, about this kind of um, story, right, is what we're doing is there's two types of stories in every single story out there, right? There's the A story and the B story, okay? Now, the A story is pretty interesting because it's basically the overall story theme, all right? This is the idea that we put on a poster, all right? So let's say if you're making a poster about a movie, right, or you're doing your big pr promo shot about the movie, most likely what's in the promo shot is the A story, all right, because you can't really explain that. You don't have time to. It has to be very like, obvious, all right, uh, while the B story, right, the B story is something that's more of the personal story of the character. This is, what, this is why you give a damn about the actual main character. All right, so that's the B story. It's personal. A story is societal. All right, so uh, let's go look through actual PowerPoints. And it says uh, the A story is the clear goal of a story, the external motivation. So this is stuff that's external, right? This doesn't have to do with their personal feelings. This is the world forcing us to do something, all right? Maybe um, place, your plane gets hijacked, external, right? Maybe... An outbreak of, of COVID-19 shuts down your city. External, right? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, that's the genre, right? And then uh, uh, there's mandatory tasks necessary to succeed put on by this external force, all right? So now you have to fight vigilantes. Now you have to save the one person, right? These are, these are like goals. These are like missions, right, that the external story is telling you about. Uh, so, but the B story is very different. So it has the motivations of the main character, what he or she needs, like, what do I need? Why am I really here? It's not because I'm trying to save the world. It's because I'm trying to escape from being a, 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 a disgraced officer. And I just feel like I just want to stop. I just want to let somebody else save the world. Why me? Why me? That's his, that's his, that's what he wants, Right. But it's not necessarily what he needs. What he needs is redemption. What he wants is to be left alone. Opposites. All right. How about that? A love interest, a secret desire, a goal unrelated to the main storyline. The B story needs to be a physical person or thing. So in other words, this might confuse some of you, but basically the B story is an actual thing. All right. It can't be like like, hey, uh, uh, for, for instance, remember how I was using last week um, 
the story uh, Die Hard, right? So Die Hard. Uh, there's a B, there's a B story in there, right? And the B story is um, there's actually two B stories in there. It's the reason why people love that story, right? So one is the cop who shot a kid, right? He shot a kid, and now he don't want to be in the line of duty anymore. He kind of took a desk job and and basically quit being an officer, right? And by helping uh, Bruce Willis, he's he's getting back into that idea of doing something to save people and make a difference in the world. So that's his B story. The other B story is Bruce Willis and his wife, because they have a horrible love hate relationship type thing. Right. And throughout the entire story, you're seeing elements of that. You're seeing him hate certain colleagues, certain people who work with her, but then at the same time, he doesn't want to see them get killed. So he's like trying to save them, even though he doesn't really like them. And there's a whole bunch of mess going on in the mind of Bruce Willis, right? John, John McCain, or, or what's it called? McLean, John McClain. And this is the kind of B story that people love. So let's go um, look into some examples and then we could uh, move that forward, right? So first things first, let's talk about um, the way we define it is very important, right? We want to be able to explain it clearly so we can write clearly. So uh, examples of A stories, the good examples would be like finding water and freedom. That's Mad Max, right? Mad Max isn't about surviving in a post-apocalypse world. Very specific. Finding water and, and, and keeping your freedom. That's the two things you want in this post-apocalypse world. They're very clear missions. Uh, how about this one? Uh, saving the people from terrorists in the building. Clear mission. That's my mission. Die hard, right? Uh, stop a war. Stop a war between the surface and the sea. Aquaman, right? I gotta stop this war. That's that's the theme of the story. Stop the war. All right. But then you have uh, bad examples. So this is where we get too vague, right? And we don't give a mission. There's no mission. It's just telling you how the world is. So like if you saw in that um, pitch earlier, we saw a pitch where it said, um, you know, between two warring factions in space. That's it's too vague. It's too vague. And as a result, right, uh, it doesn't differentiate itself from any other stories. So we want to make sure that we're differentiating ourselves. So here's an example. The rich citizens in Elysium. Right. If I told you there's rich people living in space and poor people living on earth. That's describing the world. That's not describing the actual conflict. You understand? That's not describing the actual conflict in the story. So you're going to have a hard time getting somebody to care, right? Uh, how about this one? The 12 districts in the Hunger Games. There's 12 districts in the Hunger Games. Okay. Tell me why, right? I'm not saying that the Hunger Games didn't have a great A story. They do. But if I explained it that way, the twelve there's twelve districts in the uh, in the Hunger Games. Nobody would care. They're like, okay, thank you, thank you for the info. You know, five armies battle for a treasure. Why? <laughs> right? Like, why? Why are they fighting for a treasure? There has to be some reason why five different armies are fighting for the same damn thing. Why? Right? So you don't want to leave these questions in your A story synopsis, why this story is happening. There's very important elements of the summary as well. And then let's go into the B story. The B story, right, is the personal conflict of the main character, all right? So uh, when we talk about good examples of a B story, we talk about stuff like Obi-Wan training Luke and telling him secrets about his past. So what's happening is this, right? Luke Skywalker wants revenge for his family dying, right? A story. He's trying to get revenge, period. That's his A story. So what he wants, right, is revenge. What he needs is forgiveness. If he can forgive, right? then he'll be much stronger and he'll actually be able to protect the people in his future, all right? So the reason why he couldn't before was because he wasn't mature. Now he is mature. So this whole idea of the, the, the 
from changing what he wants to changing what he to getting to where he needs, that is Obi-Wan's job. He is the catalyst for the growth of Luke Skywalker. And eventually they go and kill him off because you know what? You can't get too much help in a story. If somebody's carrying you throughout the whole story, you're going to fail, all right? This is a reason why Kakashi goes away in Naruto. There's a reason why um, Sasuke eventually leaves, right? It's, it, it, these things have to happen. It becomes too normal if they stick around the entire time, and the main character doesn't have to exceed their goals because they're being carried by all the people, everybody else, all right? How about the hairstylist in Legally Blonde? So the hairstylist, she's she's trying to motivate the main character to keep pushing forward and not give a damn what anybody says, even though, you know, the main character is doubting herself all the time. She's trying to be a lawyer, right? And even though she's somewhat of an airhead, she's actually pretty smart, right? And but she isn't. She's not confident like that. She doesn't really have that kind of confidence. However, the hairstyles can give a damn what anybody thinks. And the more that she starts falling because of world pressure and pressure of society, the more the hairstylist grounds her, right? Until eventually she has to go and do it herself and pass the bar and do all that stuff. So the hairstylist is a great B, B story character who's keeping the main character motivated to move forward because everybody else doesn't forsake her. All right. How about another one? This is an epic one. This is a story, if you looked at Unbreakable, Basically, the entire story is carried by the B-story character, Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass is pushing Bruce Willis throughout this entire story. And, and you're watching him mold him and shape him and grow him for, throughout the entire thing. This is one of the most epic B-story characters you've ever seen in your life. Because you really, you really feel for the character. You really feel for it. You're like, man, man. This is an epic thing, man, what he's doing for this guy, with all the stuff that he's doing. Then you find out later on, they give him a huge uh, thing. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but watch, watch Unbreakable and really pay attention to what's going on. It's a dope story. Uh, but then you have, like, bad examples. Let me say this. I personally don't like Robin. I'm sure people love Robin from Batman. Me, personally, Robin's not a good sidekick. All right? I don't like Robin. I just don't like them. Now, they do eventually show some very important things about Robin's past and everything else, but he doesn't really he doesn't really build up Sp uh, Batman. You know, I mean, ugh, come on, man. He's not a good sidekick character, all right? Love interests that don't play a critical role in the actions of the A story. So in other words, sometimes you add a love interest in the story, but they're not a part of the, of the A story at all, right? They have nothing to do with the A story. And what that happens is it's it, it distracts from the, the character development of the main character. You understand? So we have to be careful about that. We got to be mindful. Let's see. <laughs> and with that, um, before I go into this next part, let's go and discuss some of that. I want, I want you to ask your questions before I go into the kind of stories that exist in the world. These are the stories. There are no other stories out there in the world, but I'm going to break them down a little bit. First, let's talk. Let's see what we got to say on these comments. Feel free to, to give any comments at all about the A story, the B story. I'm taking questions right now. And while you're doing that, I am going to drink some water. I need some water. Let's see what we got here. Uh, me personally, I don't really read about Nightwing, so I don't know. I don't know his story, but I know Robin's story is kind of weak. You know, it's it's definitely not something. It's just a sidekick to be a sidekick. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 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 just it just ain't ain't there. Uh, we're gonna tackle that. So that's a good question. This is a good question, and it's one of the questions that we're gonna be loving after the next section. All right, because. This is a perfect question for after I read off all of the different types of stories, right? And because there is that question, is my story this or is my story that? And the main thing is, it's not about whether 
your story is this or that. It's more about if it is one of those, you need to fit the actual story like principles, the rules of that story, and you need to get them in your story. You can't go and say, hey, I, I'm following this genre for my story, and then all of a sudden uh, try to break all the rules of that of that genre. People will just hate the story. You know what I'm saying? So because they expect certain things, the mind expects certain things in the story in order for it to be considered good. It's weird like that, but it happens. Uh, is the B story just another um, word for filler? No, B stories kill movies. All right, if you don't have a good B story, and this is the sad part about uh, about B stories, is basically movies sell tickets based on the A story, right? So look at this. I'm selling tickets to uh, a film, like a Marvel film, right? And they bank 100% on their A story. They say, hey, I'm going to show you superheroes. I'm going to show you an even hardcore, more, more bad guy. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. And you're like, okay, cool. I love it. It's amazing, right? But then they give you a horrible, horrible, horrible B story. So what happens is the A story is pretty simple, right? Some intergalactic person's coming to attack Earth again, right? That's, the, that's all of the Avengers right? The B story, though, is the actual villain. Why anybody should give a shit, right? <laughs> so, 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 um, so the first villain, right? Uh, that's Loki. Loki's a complicated character. We've seen Loki before in Thor. We know who Loki is. We are attached to him, right? We're not necessarily hating him, even though he's trying to conquer the world. For all we know, he might be one of the good guys. I don't know. But Loki's not the character that we can't stand. So as we watch Loki go through the story and comes and with success and comes with failure throughout the entire story, the heroes keep changing their perspective on the main character, which is the main villain, which is Loki. And we love that movie. So Avengers 1 does amazing. We're like, yeah, freaking Avengers, best damn movie ever, right? And then we go Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. And no one gives a damn about Ultron because Ultron is a horrible B character. He's so he's so boring. He only, he only has he only does the exact same thing over and over again. He has a vendetta with with Iron Man for no reason at all, right? He's a boring character, and the whole story revolves around what is Ultron gonna do? So you're basically sitting there bored to tears about this guy who you don't really care about, and you're like, man. You know what, man? This movie's kind of whack. And as a result, Avengers 2, for the most part, is a flop compared to the Avengers whole sequence, right? You're like, eh, I don't really like Avengers Ultron. I thought that was kind of lame, right? Then you have the ultimate B story ever, Thanos. And Thanos is not even Thanos is such a good B story character that he's the free he's almost the main character of the freaking movie you don't know whether he's bad or good he has good reasoning he has good thoughts he's actually pretty loyal to his own people he's he 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 he, he takes losses well but he does mourn for those who who suffered he feels great about the people who are left behind he's like yeah that's what I'm talking about. You know, live amazingly. He's an odd character that you kind of you kind of hate and you love him at the same time. And you're like, man, this is complicating the whole story. I want to see what happens. I have to know what happens because this is this is much deeper than I thought it was going to be. All right. So that's why a B story is important. And that's why uh, people can completely ruin their stories with no with very weak B stories. Let's see what else. Mm. How many side stories are too many? More than two. Do more than two? You better, like, unless you write in a freaking book series, like freaking, um, uh, uh, freaking um, Game of Thrones, more than two is way too many for, for, for any one book. Uh, a good example is this. When they want to talk about a different character, in Game of Thrones, they just write another book for that character. Do you understand? They literally say, all right, this book is from the perspective of this character. 
Do you understand? So that's literally how they deal with too many stories. They make a completely different book and keep the narrative from that perspective. All right. So there we go with that. Let's see. Let's see. Here's an explanation from Carlos. Carlos says, uh, from what I get, the A story is the main character and the B story is the support character. Uh, no. The, main, the A story is the world. The world scenario. Aliens invade Earth. You know, and you must stop them in some specific way. That's the A story, right? The B story is your internal conflict, right? Because the hero could be flawed. Maybe the hero is the actual bad guy. Who knows? Maybe they're the mega mind, right? The mega mind who's always been the villain, right? He's always been the villain. But if he wins, what happens? His entire life, he's been trying to be the winner. And then he finally wins. And now he has no clue what to do with his life. <laughs> so he has to make a decision. <laughs> so that's, that's that's a great B story, by the way. Uh, Mega Mind is one of the one of the one of the better stories out there ever written. You got that's a great story. This is the. Uh... Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to the next section. Do, do, do. Boom, the 10 story plots. All right, these are basically, I like saying plots, right? Uh, but basically, these, these basically explain the entire story from beginning to end, right? And there's only 10 different kinds of stories in the history of the world. No matter what book you read ever, it's going to fall into one of these 10 stories, all right? So um, the first one is Monster in the House, right? The idea for Monster in the House is simply survive, right? That's the goal of the story. The goal of the story is to survive. But there are rules. There are very specific rules. you got to follow the rules because if you don't follow the rules, no one gives a damn about the monster. The monster has to be so overwhelmingly in an advantage that you're really fearing for the main characters in some kind of way. So there are rules. The first thing is there has to be a house, all right? The house. The house is basically an inescapable scenario. So there's no escape from the situation you're in. You just have to figure out a way to either survive or kill the monster. But there's no way out. You can't avoid it. You can't outweigh it. You can't run away from it. You can't do anything. So great stories are like this. You're in a sinking boat and you can't get out because you'll drown if you if you try to get out. So how the hell you get out? That's you said it, you don't even need a monster when it comes to um, to the monster in the house story. Sometimes the raw elements of the universe are considered the monster, like your plane crashes in the middle of the Alaska or something like that, some uncharted place. And the simple conditions of the cold right and the lack of food and, and, and stuff that can kill you and this struggle to survive that is the monster in the house scenario there's nowhere to go everywhere you go you're you're, you're gonna die so, so how do you survive this and the whole story is how somebody most likely somebody with a troubled past survives this scenario right so that's the monster in the house thing it could be an alien hunting down humans or it could be simply in a situation that's going to kill them somehow, some way. And they have to survive, but there's no escape. So they have to do it some other way. You can't escape. That's the rule, monster in the house. Uh, out of the bottle, wishes and curses. So this is basically, um, um, there's an anime, there's an anime uh, uh, genre for this. Um, I think it's Sokikai or something. I forgot what it's called. Uh, uh, but basically the idea is this. Something happens magically, and now the person is in a new world, right? And they're trying to live out their dreams or their nightmares or whatever. But the, the whole thing is the world changes completely from one thing to another. And now this person who has a completely different identity must now exist, all right? So the real um, story of this is how does a person adapt to a completely new environment and a new self? That's the story. Wish fulfillment. All right. So that's out of the bottle. Uh, 
why done it, right? These are mysteries. These are mystery stories. You're basically trying to figure out, you know, who the killer is, right? Or why did they do something? Most of the time, though, these stories, the reason why it says why done it instead of who done it, um, the reason is because the story is really about the investigation. And the investigation is why, why this, why that? You know something killed somebody, right? So you know that happened, but why? Why did somebody do this? Why did this person go missing? Why, 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 why? So the whole story is revolving around the main, the reader trying to figure out why something happened in order to figure out who did it. All right. So that's the reason for that. The Golden Fleece. This is a, this is an old one. All right. This is the mythology story, right? A journey, a mission, a personal challenge. This is where somebody comes to you at the beginning of the story and tells you, you have to do this. And you say, wait a minute, I'm not qualified to do this. And they say, bruh, there's nobody else. You're going to do it. And you're like, oh, well, maybe after some thought, guess what? I guess I'll go on this trip, right? So, so, so that's the golden fleece idea. The reluctant hero now has to go on an incredible journey, right, to solve a specific thing. They're not just leaving. It's not like I'm going to leave home and go to college. No, that's not good enough. The golden fleece can actually be something like this. I'm going to get my doctorate at Harvard, right? And I'm some really poor kid from Mississippi. That's a good one. And that's a good story for a golden fleece scenario because he's out of his element 100%. Everybody around him is rich or privileged. They're on the completely other side of the country. They're freaking... um. They got to deal with just random discrimination and everything else. And this whole time, they're being pressured to go back home. All right? But they don't turn around. They could turn around. They don't turn around. All right? Institutionalized. So this is where you're in a group, right? You're in a group. And the, the group as itself will succeed or fail based on their actions in the story. And the story is more about social social interactions and less about the, the, the A story, right? So in other words, uh, what, was it? what was that damn movie? Uh, but most stories in prison, right? Most stories in prison ends up with institutionalized. Does prison make you more of a criminal, right? Or does prison make you reform criminals, right? And this, these things is it, you're, you're, you're fighting a system. There's a system in place. And the system is the A story. Maybe it's prison. Maybe it's the military. Maybe it's um, the intergalactic space force. And you're a part of that. And you're trying to either conform to it or, um, or get away from it. Either way, the main character has to be conflicted. They can't always toe the line. All right? Because if they toe the line 100% of the time, they're more like a side character and not the actual main character. The main character can't be... I, I'm 100% exactly the way I'm supposed to be all the time. If that was the case, it would be a very, very, very uncompelling main character. All right. Buddy love. Uh, life changes due to a personal relationship. So buddy love stories are actually very common in friends. All right. Sure, it could be a story about an actual relationship between like a man and a woman, right, or some kind of sexual relationship. But in reality... Most of the time, people tell the story of buddy love uh, when they talk about friends, friends doing something wild and crazy, right? And one friend is usually very different from the other friend. They, they're almost never exactly the same. They almost, they almost always completely night and day between each other because it makes for amazing dynamic experiences. Buddy loves tend to be a, um, comedy focused most of the time, all right? And actually pretty low budget. So if you want to spend money the right way, buddy loves a good choice. A superhero. I am different. And that is all kinds of drama. That's basically what it means. I'm different. It don't necessarily mean I have superpowers. All right. Superhero story could simply be I'm very smart and all these other doctors and nurses are retards. And you're like, what? <laughs> so, but that's house, right? The guy is a genius. The, the main doctor is a genius. And he's bored. He's bored 24-7. And he's at this hospital with all these rules and processes, and he can't take it. He's like, I hate this freaking place. 
I'm going to do it my way, but he can't. So this is the idea of the super, the superhero in a, in a world that's normal. And how does, how does he live in that space? How does he not get in trouble? How does he succeed without making everybody hate him? Right? So this, this is the idea of the superhero. Doesn't have to be an actual superhero. You understand? Iron Man's constantly loved and hated by society. One second he's loved, the next second everybody's trying to arrest him. You know, this is this is the idea of the superhero story. Uh, dude with a problem. Uh, ordinary guy ends up in extraordinary situations, right? So usually with the golden fleece, and this, this, these two are very similar, right? Golden fleece and dude with a problem. The only difference is this. In golden fleece, usually you'll have some kind of like legacy. Like maybe you come from, you were the son of a king or or um, your family was killed by this crime syndicate a long time ago, and now is your chance to actually get revenge for them. There has to be some kind of past history between the A story and the main character, right? There's, a, there's some kind of legacy. There's something there that says these two are connected by destiny, and they have to they have to collude, um, collide. Dude with a problem is no destiny at all. It literally is random event happens to somebody and now they have to do extraordinary things right to survive so here's a good example here's a good example and a bad example all right any movie with the rock any movie with the rock is a bad example because most of the time the rock is like an amazing version of whatever the hell he's doing so let's say the movie um sat what is it called san andreas or something like that i think it was san andreas uh yeah san andreas He's like the best rescue guy ever, right? Before the movie even begins, we're we're basically convinced The Rock is the best rescue guy ever, right? So at this point, it's no longer a dude with a problem story when the whole damn California is breaking up and falling into the sea. That's not really what's what's the you know that's not really the genre. It's definitely not. Uh, uh, do with a problem story, even though there is a problem that he has to deal with the entire story, he's very well optimized to do it, right? How about this one, though? The difference between that and then Die Hard. Die Hard, is Bruce Willis the best cop to ever live? No, he's just some regular fucking street cop. He's a regular street cop in New York City, and he's in L.A. He's not even in New York. <laughs> so, so, He's just a regular bum. He's like, he's a regular dude. And somehow now he has to fight like 30 terrorists by himself, right? And he's getting jacked up throughout the entire story because he's not ready for this. He's not ready for this. You know, uh, so 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 that's that story, right? He's not overpowering the enemy. He's getting really lucky, right? He's thinking using his mind, but he's not a goddamn genius because sometimes they outsmart him. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that's what I feel the difference is between do with a problem and the golden fleece. The golden fleece is destiny, right? Do with a problem is regular dude trying to get things done because he has to. You know, uh, the fool triumphant. Uh, this is a cool one. A clear underdog and an institution holding it back. So, um, the fool triumphant is really good for um, stories about underdogs. You know, there's a lot of underdog stories out there. Most people try to make their hero an underdog, even though they're a hero. Like they're they're strong, they're whatever, but we call them an underdog for whatever reason, you know? Like, but that's not really like like an underdog story. You know, like, like Full Triumphant is very similar to like Forrest Gump, right? No matter what he does, nobody accepts him as a great person until the very end. You know, he tr but he, he's smart in his own ways, right? He's strong in his own ways. Uh, how, what's it called? How to Train Your Dragon, great story. Another great story about, about a fool triumphant. This guy is trying to be nice to dragons, and he thinks he can train them and be friends with them. And all the other Vikings are like, what are you, an idiot? This is not how we do things here. We kill dragons. You know what? We're going to lock you up. You know what? We're going to stop you from doing this. You're lucky you're the king's son, or otherwise we'd have thrown you off the island a long time ago. This is the full triumphant story. It's an underdog who has completely unconventional 
ways of handling the current situations in life, but society says, no, go away. <laughs> it's actually very similar to the superhero story. The only difference is in a superhero story, society usually can't deal with the skill of the main character, whereas in the full triumphant, the society can deal with the problem the full triumphant wants to fix, but the way they're dealing with it is problematic, and the fool wants to reform. Okay? So, with that being said, let's talk. What do you think your story is and why? Tell me what do you think your story, the one that you're currently working on, is and why is it that? All right? And give good, compelling reasons. I'm going to pull them up and we can discuss it. Uh, princess ballerina. Let's see. Um, let's see. Can a story be in two categories? For instance, can a story be golden fleece and superhero? Uh, yes, but you probably want to follow the rules of one or the other. All right. So for instance, in superhero, the main character has a huge advantage over the world, right? And that's the conflict of the story is how do they, how do they fit into a world that is not prepared for them. Do you understand? However, a Golden Fleece story is the main character is going on an epic journey that they are not prepared for, right? That they're reluctant to do. So it's completely different things. For instance, there might be no superheroes at all or anybody with special powers in a Golden Fleece story. Whereas in a superhero story, there might be nobody who really stands a chance against the main character. So something like uh, The Boys, where basically um, uh, the, main, the main dude, uh, what was it, Homelander? Homelander is literally untouchable to the point where the government itself fears him and will never charge him with a crime because they're scared that he might destroy half the country. So they, they have this, this weird this weird relationship with Homelander where they're trying to be nice with him but not give him too much leeway where he thinks that he can do whatever he wants. That's that's a, a superhero story, right? N not all superhero stories are about the good guys. Sometimes they're about the bad guys, right? Golden Fleece is very different from, uh, from superhero. What I would say is most likely if it's close to Golden Fleece, it might be close to, um, to do with a problem, all right? Those are very similar. Golden Fleece and Do With a Problem is very similar. Um, superhero is not very similar to Golden Fleece. All right. So maybe there's some things you're thinking about that's making you believe that, but superhero and Golden Fleece are very different stories. Let's see. All good, family. Uh, so I won't be, uh, I'll be more conscious of that all right sometimes i get into a lot of energy and i i say certain things that i probably shouldn't say all right so sorry about that i won't do it again all right bro uh let's see uh okay so a golden a golden a golden fleece without the i mean a golden fleece without of the bottle elements uh yeah there's no reason for there's no reason those two are usually work hand in hand so in other words usually what happens is the 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 out of the bottle scenario happens right someone is thrown into an alternative world right like black knight right martin lawrence works at a theme park right martin lawrence works at a theme park from medieval times or whatever and he falls into some water, and for some reason, when he gets out the water, he's now in the actual medieval ages, <laughs> and, he, and he's a knight. And now he has to go and you know save the queen from a, a ridiculous scenario. Now he's forced into a golden fleece thing. He's just a regular um, worker at a at a what's it called? But now he has to be a knight and actually save people in real 
medieval times. You know, so so that's they usually complement each other very well. Oh, out of the bottle transitions into golden fleece. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. Main character is fighting monsters and demons all over New York in search of his missing sister. Well, one thing is, if um, are do everybody know about demons and uh, and uh, monsters? If if most people have no clue about demons and monsters, then not only is this story uh, what you're talking about, it's also institutionalized, right? Because what happens is. You know, just like in Blade, Blade is fighting humans just as much as he's fighting uh, um, vampires because vampire because the humans don't believe that vampires exist. So he has all this social pressures to act a certain way in the public. You understand? So that's the institutionalized. How does he deal with the public, the public perspective versus the reality of things? Right? He sees things differently. He's also a vampire. But he can't fit in with other vampires. You understand? Institutionalized is huge in a story like that. Let's see what we got here. Uh, do a problem because the character ha um, has to fight monsters while dealing with trauma at war. Uh, not necessarily specific enough. I would like to hear more about why you think it's. Um, do with a problem. Yeah, the shield hero is a good example of a uh, transition from uh, from uh, out of the bottle, right? Uh, to um, in all honesty, I don't even think uh, it's about the golden fleece because he's not really on a quest. In fact, all he's doing is grinding levels, right? So the go it's not the golden fleece. What it is, is um, um, if we're talking about a specific example like the, um, um, the sound, like Chill Hero, uh, I would say is out of the bottle turns into um, institutionalized because all of society hates him. He has a problem. He can't sell anything. There's massive racism against his specific um, sign. You know, uh, most of the people who do like him are enslaved in their kingdom. He has constantly people undermining him in politics, and he's just trying to figure out a way to survive. And this world is basically against him. So there you go. You say he's trying to. So, so that's how I feel about that one. Let's see. Uh, Yep, that's probably exactly if it's if you're rebelling against the system, it's definitely institutionalized. All right. They have to be in the system though. They can't be somebody who's rebelling and not a part of the system. They have to be a part of it. Yeah, um, okay, I'm looking at this one right here. Um, journey starts once his home is invaded and destroyed. All right, so we have the person whose family was destroyed. Now they have to go somewhere. Uh, he learns of his part of stopping an ancient prophecy. So he's part of a prophecy, right? So this is definitely Golden Fleece-ish, right? So this is definitely a Golden Fleece story. Uh I don't understand this part though. So this part right here probably isn't helpful information. So when you're explaining things, try to avoid saying it like this because all the characters better go through some personal growth. <laughs> you know, so 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 make sure that you're very specific about that. Don't think it's a group of superhumans going against a military organization. Uh, no, uh, you got my story so well. Okay.
No, that's pretty good. I like that kind of background story. You need to add that to the log line. Whatever the log line is, throw those elements in there. A bounty is placed on somebody's head and he finds out that the, it, it's his family that did it. Woo! People gonna be like, oh, wait a minute, man. You mean your family put a hit on you? What did you do? All right? At this point, you're gonna be like, yeah, what did you do? They're gonna wanna read it just to figure out whether this guy deserves it or not. Because they're gonna be like, that's some crazy mess. Dude with a problem. Okay. Ch okay, let's see this one. Cho um, dude with a problem. Chosen by a holy being to be a bringer of death, this man attempts to reclaim his normal life while fighting his urge to kill. Okay. Uh, so this is definitely not dude with a problem. All right. This is actually... Um, this is actually uh, a superhero, right? Because he, he has more power than most other people, right? So this is actually a superhero genre and maybe out of the bottle because he wasn't born to be the angel of death or whatever. He was created, he was made into that. So, so it's a completely different life experience from what they were, right? And that's really what out of the bottle means. It means the world is completely different from what it was in the past violently different and as a result they have to figure out how to even function anymore because it's not the same world they used to all right so both of those genres would be more appropriate for for that kind of story all right let's see right here uh princess ballerina has a question uh uh trying to figure out if my story is golden fleece or out of the bottle uh it's about an insecure princess who is forced in into an unknown world to battle societal expectations of beauty. Uh, it's definitely not out of the bottle. Okay, so so um, if she is still a princess, if she's a princess throughout, it's not it's not out of the bottle. All right, a uh, 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 out of the bottle story would be the princess and the frog. All right, so she becomes a frog. <laughs> you know, so 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 that's that's out of the bottle, right? It's like that's completely different from what she was expecting to do, right? But right now, what you're saying is not necessarily that. What I would definitely call it is um is um institutionalized. I wouldn't even call it a golden fleece. It's institutionalized. What happens is she's a princess. She's being forced to um to whatever whatever role by society, and society has expectations of what she should be. But she don't want those expectations on her. That is 100% institutionalized story. She's trying to go against expectations that society has for her, even though her birth is as a princess. Let's see. Rites of passage. Where's rites of passage? That's not on here. Oh. Uh, thank you. Uh, does do with a problem work for that then? Uh, what, 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 what? Go back. In terms of family as a bounty. Yes. Yes. Uh, that is true. Um, your story could um, f fall into do with a problem because it's a crazy scenario. It's actually one of the one of the great scenario choices. Like there's another one like the retreat or whatever, where basically people go on a business trip. Right. They go on a business trip and suddenly they find out that someone put a hit on them. And they're like, what the hell? I'm not even like an important person. Why did somebody put an assassination hit on me? You know, it obviously fails. Otherwise, the story's over. Right. But now they're trying to figure out why they freaking got a, got a hit on them and why they're running from people trying to kill them. Right. They don't know why it happened, but they're trying to do it. You know what else is a really good story about do with a problem? Uh, the Terminator movies. Right. Terminator. Regular dude being chased by a future cyborg who's coming to kill them. And the reason why it's coming to kill them, because allegedly they do something in the future that's very bad for them. So it's like 
It's like this dude, he's not even a scientist yet. He ain't no rebel leader yet. He's just a freaking kid, right? But they're going after him. They're going after him. And this kid, right, and his mom have to figure out how to save, how, how, to, how to survive, all right? So, so that's a dude with a problem thing. Usually do with a problem is a normal human being. They might be, they might have a job that makes them somewhat ready for the scenario about to happen, but they can't be hyper qualified. They can't be excelling at stopping that specific problem. The problem has to be way over their head, way over their head. They're totally unprepared for it, you know? And the story is about how the heck they survive, right? All right, so um, that's all we're going to do for um, for looking at people's ideas. I hope it helped you understand uh, basically, you know, ways that you need to think about your story, how you need to structure your story, because it's important. And this is why you need to read Save the Cat. There's an entire section on each genre, like like multiple, like five, ten pages on each specific genre of these stories. And it's going to help you understand the elements that you need in your story in order to tell a good one. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign you guys, and this is what I want you to do by Friday. You're going to download a beat sheet. I don't care where you get it from. If you look up beat sheet on, on Google, you're going to find this bad boy. You're going to find it so easily. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to, once you have the beat sheet fill, um, down, you're going to fill out all the beats of your story from beginning to end. All right. The beat sheet's cool because if you follow the actual instructions of what each element's supposed to be, right, then you're going to actually be able to say, you, got, you can actually be able to write out basically your entire book, right, in like a day or two. You're going to be able to write out every single element of the story in order to make it a great story in about a day or two. And once you're done with that, you might revise it a bit to go and get it right. But once you figure it out, that's your story. You got to get from one point to the next point, and you got to keep moving forward and forward until you're finally done with the entire story. So, and, and the, the explanations for each beat is so specific. It's really going to help you because watch, you're going to see examples of beat sheets from like really popular titles. Like, just ask people, just um, say, hey, examples for beat sheets in film. And they're going to give you beat sheets from very very popular films that you've probably seen before and you're gonna once you know what the beat sheet is you're gonna look at movies and you're gonna be like oh there it goes there's that save the cat moment oh there it is i was waiting for that conflict to happen you know you're like, you're, you're like you know it's coming you know it's coming at this point all stories are basically the same as far as like when the beats of the story hit they all hit Roughly at the same time, no matter what story it is, and if they if they miss those beats when they're writing them, most of the time those stories fail. I'll give you a great example. I have a lot of students who who make comics, right? And I always tell them in the first four pages, at least four, blow the reader's mind. I don't care if the story is about a kid who's doing a couple of push-ups and then. Five years later, after being a normal kid, you know, through like seven issues, he finally gets some superpower and then becomes, I don't care if that's how you're going to play your story, go right ahead and do it that way. What I care about is that in the first five or six pages, if I see a little kid just running around his house, playing with his dad and doing some push-ups, I'm closing the book and I'm never reading the rest of the book. All right. So if you're not killing something or a planet's being exploded or even a future event that hasn't happened yet, but you want to show it just so people understand, oh, it's about to get real. I, I just can't do it, man. I just can't do it. So that's all I'm saying, you know, is a reason why uh, uh, if you look at uh, Demon Slayers, right, watch that show, uh, the first episode. They put the, the the teaser or you know the the first where it's supposed to be an introduction to the show. They put it at the end of the episode. Before the end of the episode, you didn't basically didn't see any special powers at all in the entire show for the first episode. It was all about developing the character and the need and why why you should care about the relationship between the main character and his sister, right? 
But then they go at the very end and they say with the energy that they captured from that moment, that emotional moment. Now they're like, hey, before you turn this off, before you hate this show because it's basically a Japanese samurai show, look at this ridiculous graphics and enemies and heroes and, and look at the special effects. They're doing slashes where water is literally coming out of the sky. What is this thing? What is this? Oh, my God. And they're doing all that because they want to get you to the point where – all right, all right, we got you. Now we want to keep you. You have to watch episode two because I know we didn't show you special effects. We didn't have time. We didn't have time to give you super moves. But now, now I'm going to tell you that this show is all about super moves, right? So so, so that's just what I'm telling you guys, man. It's very important, and uh, these are elements you're going to want every time, okay? So, yeah, go ahead, knock that book out. I'll see you on Friday. Get that beat sheet done, all right? Thank you so much for tuning in. Manuel Godoy, I am out. Oh, yeah, and sign up for Patreon if you want to. I always love more donations. Donations, donations. <laughs> they say everybody clouded with that Umar Johnson clip, right? Donations. Where them donations at? Nah, nah. Y'all do what y'all got to do, man. I'm going to do what I got to do locked up in this coronavirus stuff, all right? I'll see y'all later. Peace.